It's almost launch day, and I'm nervous. To be more precise, the launch day is in six days as of today. Today is Wednesday before the launch. The Wednesday before the launch. And, um, I had this really cool thing planned for the launch, and that was I was going to vlog the process of releasing the book that is now known as 24 Hours. But some hiccups happened, and so here we are, six days before the launch. I've got my espresso, well, my cappuccino. I know the last montage probably offended every single barista on the surface of planet Earth, but you know what? Me need caffeine. <laughs> but anyway, so the plan is I'm going to be talking in between the different cuts of me explaining what I'm doing, because right now it is Wednesday, and I'll be showing dates and times on the bottom of the screen so you can keep track of a timeline. But anyway, without further ado, let's hear what I had to say in June. Hi everyone, it's Andrew, and it is very, very, very early in the morning, and um, I've had a thought. Institute just launched. Like, it's midnight, it, it's finally happened, I'm really excited, and... Well, I'm trying to figure out what to do next. For spoiler alert, I promised a sequel, to the Institute, and I haven't really delivered on that yet. I was so caught up in the whole release with talking about, like, Archie and all the other characters, which you're only just beginning to find out about at the time of this recording. But my plan is to document what it's like to write a sequel to a story on video. It's This is going to be on YouTube when the sequel launches. Fingers crossed, assuming I remember to record everything. Hopefully, we'll, we'll have to see what happens, but my gosh, my camera's cut up. I don't know. Who cares? This is going to be the format anyway. It's probably going to be a lot of me hand-holding, cobbling things together last second. But hopefully, by the end of this, you will understand the writer's process and the publishing process, which should be really cool. I'm going to walk you through everything, hopefully. Anyway, um, I'd better get to work. See you in a little bit. So that's all well and good. We have learned that I was going to write a sequel, and that was pretty exciting. I had forgotten at the time of the launch, until literally that night, that, oh shoot, I forgot. I promised everyone a sequel, and I didn't really think about it too much. So that's when the brainstorming phase started, as shown here. Hello. So it's uh, me again, and um, back with another update. So um, I have a few ideas kind of tumbling about in my mind about the sequel for The Institute. I have an idea for a time travel plot. I hinted about something going wrong with time travel in the first book. I thought it would be really cool to expound upon that. I also, spoiler warning for those that didn't know, there are narrators in the first book that have... Like, the narrator, I mean, who has freako powers. You can tell I'm already planning, like, an entire thing for him. It's gonna be amazing. He's gonna have colleagues who have the same narrating power he does, but on a freaky scale. You'll, you'll see. I'm really excited about this. And, um, another thing that I'm planning to do is I'm planning to have some kind of... I don't know, like an homage to the first book. It's gonna be time travel's gone wrong, dystopia, something is... Something messy has happened. It's it's going to be good. I'm just I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. The first chapter is always the hardest one because you got to get yourself over the hurdle. And once you start writing, things speed up after that. But we have to get to the writing part, so it's going to be a little bit. Wish me luck. So 
So once you have a story written, and everything is formulated, and you have a rough idea of what's going on, you write the first draft. And um, it took me a long time, actually, more so than usual. On average, I finish a first draft in about three to five weeks. It took me a little longer. It took me six or seven. But when that was done, I, um, I made a little video at like, I don't remember what time it was, like seven or eight in the morning. I pulled a literal all-nighter to finish the book. It was actually hilarious. I started the book, wrote 10,000 words over like a month or so, then I wrote 10,000 words in two days. It was pretty insane. That's my work ethic in a nutshell for you. And it doesn't make any sense. But anyway, let's see the clip of me being very excited about finishing the first draft. I, I apologize for the muddy footage and I kind of have to keep my voice down. It's late in the day, isn't it? It's past... It's past 8 a.m., but I had to show you this. The first draft is done. Uh, let's see if I can position the camera. Look at this. This is the first draft of the new book, 26,000. How exciting is that? So the first draft is done. Everything is great, everything is dandy, everything's wonderful. So the next step in the writing phase is not even writing, it's more editing. I do three different kinds of editing over the course of 10 passes. I do three drafts on my own, then I send it in for a professional copy edit, I do another draft on my own, the sixth one is more of a beta read just to make sure the story makes sense, seventh one is another review by me just to make sure everything's right, the eighth one is a proofread like a final polish, and then we have a ninth and tenth draft that I just kind of look over everything to make sure everything is up to spec. And yet somehow, typos still slip through, I don't know how. But anyway, I'm going to be playing through a couple clips of me doing the copy edit, which is really exciting. It got it came back to me by the professional, and here we go. I apologize. This video is going to look very, very weird because I didn't. I don't normally plan these sessions, but it so happens the editor that I was I sent my manuscript to he has returned, and as you can see, he has quite the setup, actually. It's pretty great. I'm seeing a lot of critiques, which makes me happy. It looks like um, I saw a note above there. Let's see if any more notes. Oh, yep. I'm seeing notes, which sometimes pains me inside. But you know what? It's a worthwhile cause because it improves the story. I, I apologize. My camera's in such a weird place, and I can't move it because my room is being... Like, it has stuff everywhere. I can't really do anything about it at this time. So, for the time being, you get half-faced me, which is lovely. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go through this and clean it up, and I'll talk to you in a bit. One successful editing session later, here we are, right here. And if I just mouse over this, we can see the new revised word count is 26,600. I and 57 pages. Now I don't actually remember what the uh, what the page count was before, but there you go. Now you know. Hello everyone, it's Andrew, and with another vlog video, without my face though, because well. 
um, this was so sudden. Um, the developmental slash uh, beta read came back to me, and it's time for me to go over the gripes that um, my beta reader Sarah had to say about my manuscript. And um, she had a lot of problems with it, including where several paragraphs repeated in the first chapter. So I'm going to be going through this and fixing this, and I'll see you in a bit. All right. So it has been a hot minute, more like a hot few hours actually, um, it's gotten a little um, tiring, it's been a hot few hours actually, and now it is time to look at this. And now we are going to be um, just briefly glancing, glossing over this, so as you can see she had a lot of comments on different things that I had to fix. You can see this, thank you for allowing me, abba -da -da. we've got... If they're robbers, why would they be looking for someone? So obviously this entire set here changed. We changed it to women, not robbers. That'll be more relevant when you read the story later on. I'm aiming to have this thing out by around late August, so fingers crossed on that. I love this. What makes them most vile? The answer is nothing, because I removed it, because I didn't think it worked. <laughs> Who? I thought he didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> Now, these comments sound a little silly right now, only because I went through and meticulously fixed everything. If I hadn't done that, these comments would have made a lot more sense. But yeah, the entire manuscript all the way down, wait, I need to, all the way down is finished. She had a lot to say towards the end, I will admit, but you know what? In the end, it's going to be worth it. Oh, sorry for the seizure warning there. <laughs> and, um... I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out. By the way, while this was happening, I ended up getting the cover for the book. Check this bad boy out. Right here. Check this out. This is cool as heck. Look at that. This is amazing. Um, just look at this. We've got like an audiobook cover. If we do it, we got an ebook cover. We've got few tweaks need to be made to this but um outside of that really exciting stuff i'm looking forward we also have the logo right here it's gonna be great to see where that goes in the near future anyway i'll have to wrap the session up and i'll see you in the next one great so the book has been edited for the most part anyway there was a little hiccup with the proofread which you are about to see so you saw the copy edit, you saw the developmental edit, known as the beta read. But, unfortunately, the proofread didn't work out with my editor. And the reason for that is because he raised his rates, and I hadn't anticipated nor budgeted for that. I do intend to hire him again for the next proofread job I need, but I wasn't prepared financially for the price increase. So I ended up doing the proofread myself for this launch, which isn't ideal, I truly you would want another pair of eyes to be looking over your work, but I figured as long as I was very thorough, I should be okay. So let's take a look at it. Hello everyone, it's Andrew here, and today I am back with another vlog video, and look at this. The, um, the cover has been corrected slightly. Since the last time we talked, there has been some drastic improvements, like a lot of spacing has been changed, um, the text has changed very slightly, and we just have a lot more interest, I guess, color palette-wise. Like, you may have noticed that the text has changed here. I didn't really like that that much. Um, the picture has shifted, sort of. I mean, it was centered, and I'm going to be honest, it just didn't work for me. And um, this is really exciting stuff, but it's not the thing that is on my mind right now. And that is, unfortunately, my editor was supposed to proofread this pass, but I don't. you may or may not be aware at this point. Well, actually, you wouldn't be because I'm documenting this and I'm only going to publish it when this is done. But the editor basically was telling me that there were a lot of mistakes in this pass and I would be unable he would be unable to get to all of them with the payment I was offering so what have I been doing you may ask it's another late night and I am meticulously going through the entire manuscript I'm right here right now at um, chapter 7 so that's kind of fun 
I need to get through this entire manuscript and I need to make sure that, you know, everything is right as rain. I already found some weird anomalies in here, like one of my favorites is this one right here. It read 5 hours 34, but it must be counting down the time to the next reset. But why? This was worded really weird. I spent a good like 5 minutes figuring this one out because it was written wrong and I didn't know what to do about it. So it took me a bit of time and I have a lot more to do. So if you give me a hot second, I'll be with you in a bit. Well, I'll be darn. We're here. It is another very late night. It is way past my bedtime. What 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 time is it? 7:13 in the morning. Holy Hannah. I'm I'm definitely going to be getting some sleep. But I just wanted to say that um the manuscript is finished. At least the proofread side of things. So now what's left to do is I'm going to be sending this to the distributors to um, I mean the aggregates, the retailers and distributor and we're gonna go from there it's really exciting stuff and um yeah in a few days we're gonna be getting a um a proof back from the distributor to confirm this is what we want before we submit it to stores really exciting stuff i cannot wait to show you more so what happens after the edit you may ask like what's next well covers and e-proofs so I managed to get some fantastic covers that you may or may not have already seen online because this video is going out after the release. At least that's the plan as of six days before the launch. We'll find out just how far I take this. But the next step after getting the cover is getting the e-proof, which is when the distributor sends you a proof, like a PDF, and then they have you review it to make sure everything is correct, like trim sizes, margins, the cutoff lines, everything. So here's a quick clip of me doing that. Okay, I do not know how many, um, <laughs> I do not know how many of these uh, videos I'm gonna be making, but I've got some cool news for all of you. I, I, I once again meet you in front of, in front of the white screen of nothingness <laughs> because I don't have a better place to record. I cobbled something together early, like in a prior clip and it just looked weird. So we're not gonna do that anymore. I'm just gonna stick with the white screen if you know what I mean. But I've got something cool to show you. One second, let me get it. I don't know if I'm holding the camera correctly here, but look at that. This is the manuscript with all the beautiful copyright information and everything possible. Like, look at that. It's all formatted. I'm super pumped and excited about this, but it's going to have to wait until um, the release. Yeah, yeah, super excited about that. Um, you're going to be sending it to the distributor in a little bit. I just wanted to give a quick progress update. I think I already said I was going to send it and uh, in a previous clip, and um, I haven't done that yet because I want to do one more QC just to be sure everything's up to spec. Fingers crossed. You, you know that meme, like the one typo that makes it through every single draft that you do? I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him real hard. I can't find him, so let's hope this is the one. Anyway, I, I have to get to the submission process. See ya. Hello everyone, it's Andrew, and I just thought I'd give you a heads up that the proof is in for the paperback books. And I'm going to show it to you right now. Hello everyone, it's Andrew, and as you just saw in the previous clip, um, I have a, um, I have a proof that I need to look at, so, right here is just the guidelines from the distributor, okay, abba -da, da make sure these all line up, and we're gonna look, so this is the proof for the cover, right here. So as you can see, we've got some trim lines here, which means it's gonna cut along this line here. It looks like everything's okay. Nothing important is going to get cut off. The ISBN shows up correctly as 1199 US with this. Oh, and um, cool trick for you is five means United States dollars, then 1199 for the dollar amount. That's what this means. And um, yeah, that's the ISBN. Yep, that's all correct. Ignore this watermark. That's just because it's a proof and it doesn't want me uploading anything else while we're doing this. And now I'm just gonna quickly confirm, now same thing again, this is the ebook. So this is the paperback. This is the ebook. And if you look, we have some beautiful formatting here. 
So I'm gonna look through, ooh, well there is this, but you know what, that's not a huge concern in the grand scheme of things. In terms of things that need to be fixed, this is the lowest on my priority list. I would be more concerned about typos, inaccurate titles, stuff of that nature. And this has already been proofed, so I don't need to go through that. I'm just gonna make sure everything lines. What do we have for the top? Okay, yeah, so chapter and the title. Okay, that works. How are the graphics? Graphics look pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay by me. All right. And I'm gonna confirm one more time that nothing is touching anything. Okay, so the spine's actually thicker than I thought it was going to be, so I'm glad um, that I went with what I did there. All right. Well, anyway, so I'm gonna go to my other tab here, and you're gonna notice that we have this, which is my dashboard for the title approval. And um, downloaded it already, and I have a few options. Andrew Zucker approves this title for yabba da da Andrew just approves this title. I have revised content. The proof requests further review. There is nothing else for me to do. Do you want to promote the title? No. <laughs> I'll do that myself. And up, da up, da up, da We wait. The thing is, this page does take a little bit to load. Oh, thank you for ordering. Your order has been submitted. Da -da -da. Otherwise, yep. So this is when I just hit X on the the tab because it's a horrible idea to start using the dashboard at that point. So because their website is a little finicky at times. So, that's everything. I hope you um, had a good time, and I'll see you in the next clip. See ya. Okay, and this, this part here in the video is probably why you are all here, or at least a good chunk of you, because as some of you may recall, there was a cover change. In fact, for you, those eagle-eyed of you, there were two cover changes. So what exactly happened? Well, that's why I'm recording this segment here to explain what I didn't explain in the vlog videos. So back during Institute, there was a major plot change that occurred in the middle of revision. And this plot change caused the cover, the original cover for Institute, the picture that I will show here, to be marginally irrelevant. Yes, there was still a samurai in the story, but it was no longer centered around it being a fantasy story. So the whole magical wispy thing didn't make sense with the book. It was a sci-fi story, like a sci-fi fantasy. So more of an apocalyptic story about mind-controlled institutional things. But the problem with that was the cover didn't make sense. And so I had the covers redone for both Institute and 24 Hours. Now that is never a good idea. If you want a word of advice from me, it is a terrible idea to change the covers midway through a release because you just confuse people. I felt like I had no alternative though because of the theme of the story. It just didn't match and it was my fault for not fixing that sooner. I probably should have fixed it right after Institute was launched, but again, you know the best route through a maze once you reach the end of it. So. And you're probably thinking to yourself, wait, there's a second, the second revision to the covers you did? And yes, there was. Hello, Furnace. So at this point, I had changed the covers to these two right here. Now, they're pretty good, don't get me wrong, but I sometimes do collections on Barnes & Noble, and that is where this cover came from. And it was that cover, in my opinion, that triggered a lot of confusion in terms of people and the buying audience. So I realized I wasn't really well prepared for this major change and I'd like to apologize for that. But in the end, I feel like everything worked out for the better and I'm going to show you the next few clips. Hello everyone. So um, a lot has changed since the last time I talked with you all in front of the white screen. For one, my hair is a mess. Oh my gosh. Um, the covers needed to be changed. Now, that might seem a little odd to you, because I just sent it to the distributor in the last clip, which now was like a week or two ago, actually. But I found out something after rereading the book that the interpretation of the cover was a little off. Let me explain. So, the story's tone is very dark. It's very imaginative, but 
also kind of on the dark side. It's more of a post-dystopia story. It's a time wreck. And I realized that a bright, vibrant astronaut cover depicted the wrong style for the book. Likewise with the Institute, its predecessor. It had the picture of a magical samurai on it. Don't get me wrong, it's a great cover. I love that picture. But it didn't depict the story. It depicted the a fantasy-esque vibe with a really powerful samurai, which it's a good cover. Don't get me wrong, but if you point it in the frame of a scary dystopia prison like institution where everyone's being mind controlled by microchips, it doesn't really work. So it's a little unfortunate, but I had to have the covers changed. These are the new covers I'll show you on screen right now. I just dropped a post on Facebook very recently, and um, yeah, that is what's happened so far. I also went back and reformatted parts of the book that I felt like needed to be fixed. We are at about one to two weeks to launch time. I don't think the Institute's corrections will be done by then, but I've already sent the revisions to the distributor for 24 hours, so that's good to know. On other news, um, I'm trying to think. I'm starting a new secret project. Don't know if I'll vlog that one, but we'll find out. Um, it's a story about a hot air balloon in space. I won't say much, but that's all you're going to know for your sneak peek. It's, it's going to be really good. But until then, I um, yeah, I've got a lot of work to do to get ready for the launch. So can't wait to see you all there. Remember, September 26th. Oh, wait, you, you guys won't be seeing this until the launch, so it doesn't really matter anyway. Hello, future people. It's me, Andrew, from the past. Anyway, I'm going to get back to work. Have a good one. Ah, yes. Audio. Audiobooks. Audiobooks, audiobooks, audiobooks. I love recording voiceovers. Mm. The problem with voiceovers, though, they're very time-consuming. Fun, albeit, but very time-consuming. And... That one little cue that um, you saw on YouTube, for example, that dropped, I think it was a week or two ago, that little cue took me three hours to record, and it was like two pages of the book. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I haven't, I've slowed down the audiobook output a little bit, because my books have, believe it or not, gotten longer, which has caused a lot more trouble for me recording them. What once took me a day to record something is now taking me weeks. And once you account for sound design, music, and all that crazy, it can take a good long while. I do hope to have an audiobook for a future release, which I think I teased about in one of the clips. But for now, I'm holding off on audiobooks in general until that release, just because I feel like I need to get my head in the game. I need to prep it a bit sooner rather than later. And I want to make sure I deliver a good quality product to all of you. So here's a quick clip of me apologizing about the collection for Barnes & Noble. And in my opinion, I don't think the situation was as bad as I thought it was. I'm going to be honest, I have done anthologies with Barnes & Noble before. In fact, in our little set here for um, this conversation, I have done such a thing with Barnes & Noble. This was the hardcover dust jacket for the Adventures of Randy trilogy. So I have done stuff like this before, it's just, well, it felt awkward to me. Don't know why. So anyway, I'm going to let you all see the rest of this video, or the rest of the clips I have recorded. I unfortunately haven't received the shipment of books yet, so I have nothing to show for the actual physical copies yet. But I hope those will be in at some point fairly soon. Anyway, I'm going to wish you all a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope you have a good one. Hey everyone, so I just finished recording a, should I call it an audiobook teaser for 24 hours? It's really exciting, got a uh, little soundtrack in there, we've got sound effects to a certain extent, and of course my narration skills. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be doing an audiobook, you will know probably by the time of the release if I am or not, but I thought this would be a fun way to kind of tease about the book outside of a... Um, a book preview which I've already released. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll keep you informed when the next update comes. See ya! Hey guys, it's Andrew. So, I made a bit of a mistake with this, these two books, Institute and 24 Hours. 
I didn't realize how short they were going to be when I wrote them. And I was looking at the books, I was looking at the trim sizes, and I realized there's a better way of doing this. So, what I've, I've talked with a few people, and we have agreed that it would be the be for the best to combine the two books. Don't worry, the, the individual books will stay on the market for a while. However, we are working towards making a collection with its own cover that hopefully will please all parties. So there is that. Um, how, how do I conclude this? Huh, I just thought I'd let you all know. I'll show a picture of the cover now. I am in a rush, actually, to get somewhere. Oh, my neighbor's practicing. <laughs> um, all right. See you all, hopefully, fingers crossed, at the launch. Today is Tuesday, one week from 24 Hours' launch. I plan to release the collection October 4th, but that's still up in the air. It's probably going to be on Barnes & Noble. Anyway, see you all there. Hi. Sorry about that. I lied. I'm back. One last time just to remind you that 24 Hours releases on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. That's really crazy. And if you're watching this right now on YouTube, it's already out. You can buy it anywhere at any of these retailers right here. Or if you live in the United States, you can buy a paperback version of both Institute and 24 Hours right here. So stay tuned for more updates regarding anything else I might be working on. I've already teased about a cover right here. So hopefully you stay, hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen.